presence of the Lord. Amen. Just real quickly before we dive into the message, I want to make one uh, quick announcement. Uh, next Wednesday, Brother Austin New will be with us preaching. Uh, Brother Austin and Sister Kyla will be with us. So mark that down. You don't want to miss that next week. I know he's wound up and ready to preach. Um, so we're honored to have them next week. And so come and be a part of that. But Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6, we're going to begin in verse 10. Ephesians 6, starting verse 10. Finally, look at your neighbor and say, Finally, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and against rulers of darkness of this world and against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the armor of God that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth and having on a breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Let us pray. God, we come before you. We thank you for your spirit that's in this house. Lord, I, I, I sense it in this house. And Lord, I ask that your anointing and your spirit would fall and preach to this congregation tonight. Lord, I'm going to do my best to relay a message of encouragement. And Lord, I ask that our ears would be open, that we would hear our hearts open that we would receive what you have for us. In Jesus' name. And the church says, Amen. Amen. A very familiar portion of Scripture I just read to you about putting on the whole armor of God. But actually in Sunday school, um, as we were teaching this past Sunday, um, a thought came to me just in the middle of teaching, and I didn't let anyone know, but I began to look at this passage of Scripture, and I began to notice something at the beginning of these verses that I read. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord, and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God, that you, that ye may be able to stand, say stand, against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand, say withstand, in the evil day, and having done all to stand, say stand, stand, say stand. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness. Stand is mentioned quite a bit. Stand. Stand. 
stand, withstand. I want to preach to you tonight on this title, this thought. Don't sit down. Don't sit down. If you turn your Bibles to 1 Samuel chapter 16, one verse started this entire thought process. The Lord began to download things into my spirit. And it says in 1 Samuel 16 and verse 11, And Samuel said unto Jesse, Are here all thy children? And he said, There remaineth yet the youngest. And behold, he keepeth the sheep. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Send and fetch him, for we will not sit down till he come hither. We will not sit down until he come hither. Many of you know the backstory of this text. Samuel has been ordered by the Lord to anoint a new king. Samuel's scared at first, but the Lord says, Listen, you need to do this. I'm commanding and I'm asking you to do this. So do this. And he goes, and he goes to the house of Jesse. He invites the whole house of Jesse to the feast. And he passes through seven of Jesse's sons. And he's like, listen, this isn't it. Is there any more? And we find our text. He says, yes, there's one more. He's watching the sheep. And he says, we will not sit down. So what he was saying is, we will stand until he come hither. Or what that word hither means, until he comes to this place. Till he comes here. We will not sit down until he comes. When you begin to break down these words, and I love to, to, to just digest words from the, the Scriptures and in their original language, that, that, that phrase there for we will not sit down is is a, a Hebrew word that means we will not remove, we will not change, and we will not turn. What the man of God was saying is, until he comes, because the man of God had an anointing that he wanted to pour out on a young man. He had some oil that he was wanting to pour out, and he said, until he comes, we will not change we will not remove ourselves from the situation. We will remain here. We will not turn to the things that we were doing or the busyness of life and all these things. We will stay standing until the anointing is able to be poured out. Until the anointing is able to be poured out. What the Lord began to drop in my spirit is He says, listen, Jade, I'm wanting to do something greater than you've ever seen in your life. And I know we've talked about revival, we've preached about revival, we've prayed for revival, but now we're in the middle of a season that the enemy would love nothing more than to get us to sit down before the anointing is poured out. And he would love to come, and that's why the, the, it says in Ephesians 6, listen, you need to stand. You need to be able to stand. You need to put on the whole armor of God so you can withstand what the enemy is trying to do in your life. You need to be able to withstand. What that word means in the Greek is to resist what the enemy is doing because there is something coming. There is something that I believe that is not only coming, but I believe the cork has been taken off the horn of oil and God is lifting up his hand and he's starting to pour out something that we've never seen or encountered before. But he said right now is not the time to sit down. 
Now is not the time to be silent. Now is the time to grab hold of the horns of the altar and do what Jacob did when he was wrestling with the angel and said, I'm not letting go until you bless me, until I get what you've promised to me, until I see my children saved and set free, until I see revival at PTC Ministries and in Connorsville, Indiana. God, I will not sit down until I see your spirit poured out in a manner that I've never seen before because your word tells me that you're able and that you're willing, but all I have to do is stand. It is not a time to sit down. It is a time to stand. People might say, well, on the day of Pentecost, Pastor, it says that the Holy Spirit came into the place where they were sitting. Right? Sitting. I'm not talking about standing in a physical nature. I'm talking about standing in the Spirit. And when you begin to look at that word, that, that word sitting there in Acts chapter 2, it says that they were unmovable. They remained. They resided. They dwelled. They, they were steadfast. They were not moving until they received what God promised them that they would receive. But how many knows that when the wind came in and there be, appeared unto them cloven tongues as a fire? Pastor, my Bible tells me that in the first four verses I see something amazing and miraculous happen but somehow someone got to the door of that upper room and they were filled with the Holy Ghost and they weren't sitting any longer but they say the Bible says in Acts chapter 2 and verse 14 that Peter standing, standing what that word standing in the Greek means they, he was established established with the eleven began to preach the first message and so 3,000 souls get saved. Why? Because they locked themselves in an upper room and they said, we're going to be immovable. We're not going to change. We're not going to remove the Word of God. We're not going to preach what everybody wants us to preach. We're not going to forsake the altar. We're not going to forsake this place until we receive what God has promised us. And they came out standing with authority and with power, there's an anointing. I can, I can feel it in my spirit that there's a pouring out that God wants to take place. But we can't dare as the people and the children of God to sit down and say, I've had enough. Talk to more people. In the last few weeks, it says, I'm just tired. Tired. Wore out. This is not a time to be weary and well doing. Because I tell you, and I'm not just telling you this because this is what we're supposed to say, but Brother Chris, I believe this. This is not a time to be weary and well doing because I believe the reaping's coming. And you will reap if you faint. Not. It's not time to sit down and count everything out and say, well, maybe I'll worship. Maybe, I, maybe if they sing the right song. Maybe if they have the right preacher. Maybe if that message just speaks to me. We've got to get over all of our preferences and say, God, come hell or high water. Come whatever may come at my life. Whatever attack may come. I'm going to stand until I see the Holy Spirit moving in my children, moving in my house, moving moving in my church, moving in my school, moving in my community. I'm not going to sit down on the anointing. I'm not going to sit down on the call of God. I'm not going to sit down with fasting and prayer. I'm not going to sit down and play on the bench and say, well, I've had my turn. I guess I'm out. No, put me in, coach. I want to stand. I want to guard. I want to fight because there's a power. There's a fresh wind. There's something coming that's going to transform and change everything. I will not sit down on the anointing. I will not sit down. When the Spirit falls in the manner He's wanting to on your life, you're going to be saturated with the power and authority from on high. It'll be like Jeremiah said, it, it's like fire 
shut up in my bones. There's something that's happening to me. I, I can't help but do what God's calling me to do. Many of you remember, I exhorted on this a month or so ago, but it just keeps coming back to me. Peter, when Jesus came walking to them on the water and Peter figured out it was Jesus, said, Lord, if it's you, bid me come. What that word bid means is command me, ask me. I want to do something for your kingdom. Ask me to come to you. Ask me to do something that requires faith. Ask me to step out of my comfort zone. Ask me. That mentality is starting to take hold of the church. I see young men and young women saying, I'm sick of being scared. I'm going to do what God's calling me to do. They're stepping out with authority and with a passion. They desire something. They, they feel something. They've tasted and they've seen something. And now they, they say, I want more of it. I, I'm craving it. I, I desire it. Young people, what I want to tell you is that if you will stand, don't sit down even when things get busy. I know we're going back to school and life gets hectic and, and life gets crowded. If you've got to wake up early to spend time with God, if you've got to stay up late to spend time, with God, it's worth it to see someone that sits next to you get saved. It's worth it to see revival in Connorsville. It's worth it to see the Holy Spirit begin to move upon you and move in you and move through you. But it all comes when you say, I'm going to stand. I won't sit down. I will stand. We find Scripture, Jesus begins to stand up in John chapter 7 and prophesy the Holy Spirit. He begins to speak of the Holy Spirit, but before he begins to speak of the Holy Spirit in verse 38 and 37, it says, on that last day, that great day of the feast, he stood up. He stood up and said, there is something coming. And it will come out of you like rivers of living water. It will give life to those around you. And you will never thirst again. But it all came when Jesus stood up on the last day of that great feast. The Bible tells us in Exodus chapter 33, it says this, And it came to pass when Moses went into the into the tabernacle that all say all all the people rose up and stood every man at his tent door and looked after Moses until he was gone into the tabernacle and it came to pass as Moses entered into the tabernacle that the cloudy pillar descended and stood at the door of the tabernacle and with Moses and it would go on to say that God began to speak to him as he would speak to me and you you say what, what's so powerful in that is when the people of God begin to stand up the presence of God began to come down. When the people of God began to say, we're going into the holies of holies. The man of God's going into the holies of holies. We're going to stand up. We're going to praise. We're going to stand up at our tent door. That means that we're going to stand up in our house. And we're going to see the presence of God descend as we stand up. But that's not all. In Exodus chapter 33, it goes on. And he says, Jesus, or he says, God, show me your glory. I bid you, I beg of you, show me your glory. And he tells them this, he tells them this in, in, in Exodus chapter 33 and verse 21. He says, and the Lord said, behold, there is a place by me, and thou shalt stand upon a rock. He said, what's so powerful about that? We find that as he stands, the glory of God begins to pass by. It begins to change his countenance. Uh, he comes down from the mountain. They have to put, listen, I, I know we, we're in an area where, where, where everybody's wearing masks and, 
And listen, I'm not, not, not here to be political or say anything about that. But listen, the spiritual mask that the, the people of God need to have on them is one that people can't stand to look at them because the glory of God has shown so brightly in their life that people's like, man, you're convicting me of my sins. I, I don't know what it is about you. There, there's a spirit that, that, that comes from you. I, I just can't take it anymore. That happens with Smith Wigglesworth. That happened with the disciples. That happened with the, the men and women of God throughout history. And that can happen happen again that's the mask we need to have on ourselves but it comes when you stand he says I want to pass by but you have to stand you have to stand but it goes on we go through scripture the Bible tells us in Joshua chapter 3 the Lord speaks to Joshua and he says this he says listen prepare the people tell them to sanctify themselves for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among them. The Lord will show them that He is with you like He was with Moses. The Lord will manifest Himself to the people and to the children of God. That's, that's what He was saying. But here's what had to happen. God gives him specific instructions. And we get into Joshua chapter 3 and verse 8. And it says, And thou shalt command the priests that bear the ark of the covenant, saying, When you come to the brink of the water of Jordan, then ye shall stand in the Jordan. You say, okay, stand in the Jordan. But what began to happen when they stood in the Jordan? The Bible says that the waters parted, that it was a flooding season. The river was deeper than it normally would be. It looked overwhelming. It looked like they couldn't pass. There was no way a nation could get through this. But he said, if the men, the women, the men that I've called by my name, the people that I have chosen, this royal priesthood, the Bible Bible tells us in Revelation that we are kings and priests. So the people of God began to step in to a realm that they had never been in before. The Jordan was dirty. The Jordan was murky. And he said, when you come to the brink, you step into it. You may not know what it'll look like, but you step into it. And as they began to stand, and as they began to take a step of faith, and they began to take another step of faith, there became a pushing back of the waters and there became a crossing, a divine crossing from a, a people that were lost and bound in slavery years ago. They are now crossing into a land of promise that signifies salvation. Where are the men and women of God that will stand in the gap and say, I want to link this generation to an almighty Savior, to the promise of salvation, to the promise of reconciliation, to the promise of restoration, to the promise of freedom where are the king and priests that will stand Samuel said there's an anointing I want to pour out and we will not sit down until I have the opportunity to pour it out we will not stand until he gets here or we will not sit down until he gets here so we see Joshua tells them to stand. Stand in the river. Stand in the gap. And the Bible says that they crossed over on dry land and all the people passed over because men of God, women of God, priests of God began to stand. Began to stand. We read Elisha prophesied a drought to come upon the land. And he tells them, listen, Samaria, you're going to be surrounded. You ain't going to have no food. And it was bad. It looked terrible. It, it looked overwhelming. And the odds just looked so bleak. And everything looked dark around them. And, and we're in similar times. And we've heard this preached many different ways. But I want you to catch this. It says in 2 Kings chapter 7, these lepers... They were sitting by the gate and they said, listen, we have to do something. We can't just stay here. And this is their words exactly. It says, and there were four leper, leper men at the entering of, in the, of the gate. And they said one to another, why sit we here? Why sit we here until we die? Why 
Why are we going to sit here and starve? You say, what's the, what's the symbolism in that? Israel, the people of God, they were inside the city starving. And the enemy outside the city was feasting. The enemy was having his way and throwing a party because he thought he was going to win. So let me put this into a deeper perspective. Israel is the chosen people of God, right? It's the people of God. Even though at this time they were in rebellion, they, they were still called the church, the people of God. Church that we, we call ourselves a part of. We're the people of God. And there has been a drought for years. And the enemy's been having a heyday outside our walls. But there came four lepers. And they said, why should we sit here and die? Why should we just stay here until we die? And they began to talk to the, each other and they said, listen, if we go into the city, we'll die. If we go to the enemy, we may die, but we may live, but we have to do something. But catch this in 2 Kings chapter 7, verse 5, and they rose up in the twilight and they went to go into the camp of the Syrians and when and when they were come to the utmost part of the camp of the Syri of Syria behold there was no man there for the Lord had made the host of the Syrians to hear the noise of chariots and the noise of horse horses even the noise of a great host. And they said one to another, Lo, the king of Israel hath hired against us the kings of the Hittites and the kings of the Egyptians to come upon this. There was divine deliverance, Pastor. Divine deliverance. When they rose up. There's talk on the news all the time that anarchists, they want to overthrow everything. They're... They want to rise up and overthrow this country. You have others saying, listen, we're headed towards a civil war. There's people rising up here, people rising up here. But it's about time that the church of the living God, of the most high God, would stand up and say, listen, we're going to rise up. We're going to go to the enemy's camp, and we're going to take back what the enemy has stolen and taken and deprived our children of. We're going to take it back. We're going to take back our cities. We're going to take back our, our municipality. We're going to take back our schools. We're going to take back what, what the enemy has stolen and taken from us. We're going to take back our joy. We're going to take back our peace. But it all begins when the people of God begin to say, let's stand up and do something. He wants to move. But as you see through all these stories and all these examples that I've given you, he wants to move, but it takes someone standing up. What David goes on to do in 1 Samuel 17 and kill Goliath, that, that should have never happened on paper. But the divine happened and victories happened that shouldn't have happened. When a young boy said, I'll stand up. It's time to stand up. It's the time to take our place. Don't sit on it. Don't sit down on the moving of the Spirit. I believe God wants revival to take place. And I believe He wants it to take place and use this church for it to take place. I, I believe that he wants to use each and every person that's in this house tonight and start revival in your heart and, and, and it becomes contagious and it becomes an all-consuming fire and it becomes rivers of living water and it goes out and it flows to your co-workers and, and your fellow classmates and, and your friends and your family. I believe that's what God's wanting to do. So we can't afford to come into a service. And I, 
I'm just going to be playing with you. I, 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 I want to encourage you. I, I want you to know that we can keep on going and keep seeing the, the miraculous. And, and I believe that God's wanting to do something. I really do. And, and, but we can't come in and say, I don't feel it today. I'm just beat. Jesus was beat to a bloody pulp. You say, oh, well, he was the son of God. He was just as much flesh. He was fully God, but he was fully man. And he picked up his cross and carried it the best he could. He hung there and he died for you and me. And we come in and listen, myself included, Pastor, there's times I just don't feel it. I just don't feel it today. I don't know what it is. There's just so much going on at work. There's just so much going on in my life. And what you don't realize is you're not only sitting down on your worship, but you're sitting down on the very presence and power and authority of God. The old timers used to say, I I can feel someone sitting on me. Someone's sitting on me. I'm trying to preach and someone's sitting on me. And I'm not saying you're doing that right now, but that's what the old timers used to say. But myself, I, 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 I preach this to myself. Believe me, I preached this to myself before I came out here and preached it to you tonight. But how many times do we do that? And we let our feelings dictate our worship and our praise and our adoration towards the things of God. Man, I've had a long day. All right. It's time to receive strength, worship. He said, if you will stand, if you'll stand and you'll worship anyway, who knows what will happen? If you'll stand and you'll worship anyway, who knows what will happen? Job lost everything. And he said, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. My Redeemer lives. And God gave him double what he lost. Why? Because he stood up. He didn't get down and out and and throw a pity party. He said, no, I'm going to stand up. I don't know what's going on. I hate how I feel. I really don't like it. But I'm not going to let my flesh dictate to me who my God is and what my worship will be. I'm not going to sit down on the things of God. I'm not going to sit down on the blessings of God. I'm not going to sit down on the presence of God. But I'm going to stand and watch Him move. I'm going to stand. Watch God move. He'll come to the music tonight. Bible tells us three Hebrew boys they got in trouble Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego we all, most of us know the story strangers in a foreign land Israelite boys that were taken captive by the empire served the king they had diplomatic power they had status but then the king got a little high on himself and he said listen I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make an image and when the music begins to play I want you to bow down chapter 3 tells us that the men came to the king and said listen
stood with confidence. They were persuaded. their sons and their brethren being arrayed in white linen and having cymbals and psalmetaries and harps stood okay stood at the east end of the altar and with them 120 priests sounding the trumpets and the singers as the praise and worshipers if you will as one we're as one to make one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord and when they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and the cymbals and the instruments of music and praise the Lord saying for he is good for his mercy endureth forever. That the men of the house, or that then the house was filled with a cloud, even the house of the Lord, so that the priests could not stand. See, they, were, they stood for the things of God, but when the manifestation of God began to take over, they were in awe. Amazement, awestruck wonder. And they weren't even able to minister. 
They weren't even able to minister because the cloud was the glory of the Lord and it had filled the house of God. of God was so strong. It was so strong that they couldn't even enter the house of the Lord because His glory had filled the house. We will not sit down. PTC Ministries, we will not sit down. until he comes here. We will stand. We will not turn. We will not change. So we're going to stand. Because he had a horn of oil. He had a blessing. He had an anointing. There was, there was a call was about to come forth. There was a generation about to come and, and be anointed with such power that they could slay giants, that they could topple kingdoms, that they could lead nations, that they could lead even the downright and the sorry and the downtrodden. They could lead them and turn them into mighty men of valor. That's what David accomplished. That's what God wants to accomplish in this generation. And I will tell you, this generation is coming forth and this generation is moving and this generation is pressing towards the things of God because they're standing up and they're saying I'm not going to get distracted by this I'm not going to get distracted by that but there's a horn of oil that God wants to place on my life and I won't stop I won't stop fighting I won't stop holding on I won't sit down I won't stop standing until I receive what God has for me 
So as the lepers did, the second king said to them, rise up. When Peter stood on the day of Pentecost, he was established. What does established mean? It means immovable. It, it means you can't tear it down. It means they were, he was convinced. He was persuaded.
young person in front of you, behind you, beside you. Lay your hands on them. Say, come forth. Come forth. There's an anointing on your life. Come forth. There's a power on your life. Come forth. Holy Ghost and power. Holy Ghost and anointing. Isaiah chapter 62. For Zion's sake, I will not hold my peace. For Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until righteousness, therefore, go forth as brightness, and salvation, therefore, 
as a lamp that burneth. And the Gentiles, the lost, shall see thy righteousness and all the kings thy glory. And thou shalt be called a new name, which the mouth of the Lord shall name. Thou shalt also be a crown of glory in thy hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of thy God. Thou shalt no more be termed forsaken. You are not forsaken. Neither shall thy land any more be termed desolate. I will not sit down for Connorsville's sake. I will not sit down for Indiana's sake. I will not sit down for my son, for my daughter, for, for my brother, for my, co my cousin, for my uncle. I, I won't sit down for my co-worker. Oh, I, I won't sit down. I won't keep silent until righteousness go forth as a lamp that burns. So they'll see the glory of God in my life. Don't sit down. Continue to stand. Continue to stand. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise tonight. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Pastor Jane. Wonderful, wonderful message tonight. Paul simply said, stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ has made you free. Aren't you glad that you're free tonight? Not just somewhat free, but he that the Son sets free is what? Is free indeed. I know we go through stuff. You know, we're challenged, and we're, we, we face opposition at times. But how many knows that we could not sit down in this moment, in this time? But we must stand and be counted. We must put on the whole armor of God in this season. There is some good things ahead. Amen? I'm going to ask you to join me tonight as we dismiss. Uh, I'm going to ask you to stand with me in prayer for a couple of people tonight. Uh, we know we need to pray for our nation and, and all of the things that's going on. We need to be praying for the ministry uh, of the kingdom all across the globe tonight. We understand all of that. But also, how many knows it's important that we stand together in prayer uh, concerning specific things even beyond that. And the word of the Lord is still true. The craziness of this world has not changed it. Uh, but I still believe that there is power in prayer where we believe when we pray uh, we receive that which we pray concerning and tonight how many knows it is the will of God uh, and the Word of God is the will of God and the will of God is for us to walk in health to walk in strength and uh, tonight there's individuals that need a special touch tonight and I'm going to ask you to join me as we dismiss this evening for uh, brother Walden uh, he is still uh, he is better today uh, but he's still got a long way to go. They was able to turn the ventilator down a little bit on him today, uh, but his oxygen is still not very good, and uh, he needs a miracle. Uh, and he's uh, in the hospital in Tennessee, and uh, God is touching and God is moving, but I believe in for 100% recovery uh, with him. And uh, he has double pneumonia. He has COVID on top of that, and he also has asthma. Uh, so that is not a good combination. Uh, but uh, he is better today than he's been uh, this week. But I also would ask you to uh, pray for the Walden family uh, because Brother James Walden, Jr., uh, while he's hanging on for life, uh, his father just passed away, and that funeral service uh, will be uh, Friday and Saturday. And uh, so that family is going through a lot of difficult things and we want to pray for them and then uh, uh, most of some of you may remember Beth Moore uh, um, Beth and Mike uh, we received word right before service that uh, she's not doing very well at all I haven't been able to really confirm her actual condition but they're telling me that her kidneys are in uh, kidney failure and she's on a life support and they may be unplugging that tomorrow uh, so uh, I, I want to pray for her tonight and her family uh, and how many knows God's able? Nothing's too hard for him. But when we stand in prayer, 
we began to operate the authority and the power that's been given to us through the blood of Jesus Christ. Tonight, as we, uh, as we get ready to pray, I, I want you to stand in faith, knowing this, that God is still in control. Amen? So I don't know what you've went through today. I don't know what you've went through this week. Uh, but uh, God is bigger than all those things, all right? And uh, we're going to walk out of here victorious. We're going to walk out of here encouraged. And uh, we refuse to sit down tonight. And uh, what a powerful, powerful message tonight uh, brought by Pastor Jade. And uh, thank you. Thank you for sharing the word of the Lord tonight. Uh, can we join our, each other in prayer tonight? Dear Heavenly Father, we love you. I thank you today that you are the giver of life. I thank you that you are our source and our strength for every circumstance that we encounter. And Father, today we just uh, once again say thank you for the word. Thank you for the revelation of your word. Lord, we will not sit down. We make, a, we make that commitment to you tonight that we are pressing on. We are pressing forward to the high mark and the high calling of God. And Lord, we, we refuse to sit down on a generation. And we stand together and we uh, call forth, uh, Lord, for your Holy Spirit to come and move in the lives of the young and old alike. And Father, we lift before you tonight our church family, those that are here and those unable to be with us tonight. Lord, I pray that you would strengthen them, encourage them, equip them by your Holy Spirit. But Father, we lift before you now uh, the Moore family and the Walden family, and we pray not just for them, but we pray for their families in this time of uncertainty and this time of stress and, and anxiousness. But Father, I just pray for the healing virtue of God to come into those situations uh, and raise them up so that you'd receive glory and honor. Lord, it is your will for us to walk in health and strength. And Father, we call that forth today in those situations. Uh, and we stand and we call out uh, on behalf of our nation. Uh, and Lord, we ask that you would forgive us, uh, Lord, for straying from you. And we ask that you would continue uh, to lead and guide and direct us in this season where we would come to a place where we would be pleasing to you uh, and that you would receive glory and honor in our lives and our work that we do uh, together. And Lord, I pray uh, a blessing upon your people tonight as they go forth from this house, keep them safe upon the roadways, keep them safe the remainder of this week in their job, in their places of business. And Father, bring us back this Lord's Day, Lord, on purpose, uh, ready to stand uh, for the things of God. Help us, Lord, to be pleasing. Help us to win souls the remainder of this week. Let us be a testimony of your goodness, of your grace, and of your mercy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. We love you. We'll see you Sunday morning. Come ready to worship the Lord with us.